Lesson 11.5, Word Problem Solving Unknown Angle Measures. We can use what we know about angles and the strategy, draw a diagram to solve angle measurement problems. We can use the relationship between the known and unknown angle measures to draw a bar model. We can use the bar model to write an equation. Now, if you know nothing about bar models, we first started learning about them for addition and subtraction in video 1.8, for multiplication in video 3.7, and for division in video 4.12. And they're linked in the description of this video. There's actually going to be nine videos linked in this description along with the fourth grade playlist. To solve word problems, we read the problem carefully, maybe more than one time, we look for clue words to know which operation to use, addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. We choose a strategy. We can draw a quick picture or a diagram, like in this video we're going to use bar models. We can work backwards, act it out, find a pattern, make a table or chart. Then we solve and check to see if the answer makes sense. Sophia is cutting a piece of fabric to make her dog a scarf and she needs a piece of fabric with a 30 degree angle. After the cut, it's the dotted line, what is the angle measure of the left over corner? So we think we need to find the angle measure of the part she didn't need. So she needed this part, she doesn't need this part. We need to find this angle measure. This is angle B, D, C. And we can use what we know that right angles are equal to 90 degrees to solve the problem. We know this is a 90 degree angle. We know this one is 30 degrees. We need to find this part. And we can draw a bar model to find the unknown measure. We know the entire corner is 90 degrees, so we draw a rectangle for our bar model that is 90 degrees in all. We know this portion is 30 degrees, so we make a little portion that's 30 degrees, and we know whatever is left over is x. And x is a variable, so remember a variable is the letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount. And we can write an equation to solve the problem. The measure of angle A, D, B, plus the measure of angle B, D, C, is going to equal the entire angle ADC. We know the measure of angle ADB is 30 degrees. If we add x to it, the unknown amount, it should equal 90 degrees. We can also do subtraction and say this 90 degrees minus this 30 degrees will equal x. We have to remember to use the degree symbol and 90 degrees minus 30 degrees is equal to 60 degrees. We know that x is equal to 60 degrees. We know the measure of angle BDC is equal to 60 degrees. And we can use addition or subtraction to solve this problem because the bar model shows that the whole, 90 degrees, and one part of the whole, 30 degrees, is known. So we can use 30 degrees plus the unknown amount x is equal to 90 degrees, or 90 degrees minus this 30 degrees is equal to x, which is equal to 60 degrees. And they're inverse operations, so we could use one to check the other amount to see if it makes sense. Mr. Lee cut a piece of wood to make a 45 degree angle. At what angle was the other piece cut? So we think we need to find the measure of angle PMN, this angle right here, and angle KMN is a straight angle. A straight angle is equal to 180 degrees, and we know that the measure of angle K MP is 45 degrees, we can draw a bar model to find the unknown measure x. And we don't need a protractor to solve this problem. We don't need a protractor because we can use a bar model. The entire angle is 180 degrees, we know part of it is 45 degrees, and we're looking for the unknown angle measure x. 
the measure of angle PMN is X. And it's equal to the measure of angle KMN, the whole straight angle, minus the measure of angle KMP, this 45 degrees. So X is equal to 180 degrees minus 45 degrees. It's equal to 135 degrees. And that means the measure of angle PMN is equal to 135 degrees. And we can check our work. We can add 135 degrees plus 45 degrees to see if it equals 180 degrees, and it does. So our answer makes sense. Using an inverse operation, we can check our work. We learned about that back in video 1.7 to add or subtract as inverse operations, and video 4.11 for multiplying or dividing as inverse operations, and those are linked in the video also in the description. Emma cut a triangle from a piece of scrap paper. What is the angle measure of the piece left over, this angle X? So she had this piece of scrap paper and she cut it from S to V. She made a straight line and she made a triangle here. So now this is the leftover piece and we need to find this angle measure. So we think we need to find the measure of angle VST. VST. And we know the measure of angle RST, RST, is equal to 115 degrees. This big arc is telling us that that's the 115 degrees. We also know the measure of angle RSV is 50 degrees. And we can write an equation to solve the problem. We could write a bar model. We can also write an equation. We know the measure of angle RSV plus the measure of angle VST is going to equal the entire angle, measure of angle RST. This one is 50 degrees. This is going to be our X, and it has to equal 115 degrees. And we do the math and find out that X is equal to 65 degrees. Now, we could write it as a subtraction problem, the measure of angle RST, the whole thing, minus the measure of angle RSV, this 50 degrees, is equal to the unknown angle, the measure of angle VST. We would do 115 degrees minus 50 degrees, which tells us that X is equal to 65 degrees. And I agree with the dog, I'd rather use subtraction to solve this problem. We know the whole thing and we know a part, we could just subtract that part from the whole thing to find the difference. Now we're going to use some higher order thinking skills. Here we have some streets. This is Elm Street, this is Maple Street, and this is Oak Lane. It says Tala is driving to work. So we can see the arrow is going like this. So she's starting here and she makes a curve. As she turns right onto Elm Street from Maple Street, what degree turn does she make? Well, we can see this is 140 degrees and we have the box for a 90 degree right angle. So we think we can solve this problem by thinking of the intersection of the streets as the center point of a circle. So we have our 90 degree right here we have our 140 right here. We need to find X. We know a circle is 360 degrees. We have 140 degrees and 90 degrees. We can add them together and get 230 degrees. We need to find X and the whole thing should have a sum of 360 degrees. And we can write it as a subtraction problem. We could start with the 360 degrees and subtract these two amounts, which is equal to 230, and we see that it's 130 degrees. X is equal to 130 degrees. But we know there's usually more than one way to solve a problem, so I have a different way. We can also solve this problem by extending the line for Oak Lane through X. We can actually extend this line going up 
like this. We create a straight angle right here, 180 degrees, and a right angle, just like this one. See? So now we know that's a right angle. We know this together should be 180. And we know that this part of it is 140. So we could do 180, the whole thing, minus this 140 degrees, and that's going to equal, do you know? That's 40 degrees. We also know that this part of it, to the right of this line right here, is a 90 degree angle that we created when we extended the line. So we have this 40 degrees plus that 90 degrees. So we made the line, making Oak Lane longer. We know this little section must be 40 degrees. So together, this would be a straight angle of 180. And we created a right angle on this side. Now we can just add the 40 degrees to the 90 degrees. And that's 130 degrees. We know Tala made a 130 degree turn onto Elm Street. So extending lines can be very helpful. It doesn't change the angle measures, but it helps us use what we know about straight angles and right angles to solve problems. If we extend the rays or sides of an angle, the angle does not change. If I draw this little angle and I measure it and it's 20 degrees, I can extend the rays and this angle is still 20 degrees. It didn't change because the rays got longer. If this circle has this 20 degree angle right here, we can make a larger circle outside of it and that's going to be a 20 degree angle. And even if we come way out here, it's still 20 degrees. For this shape, if this is a 20 degree angle right here, and we extend these rays, it's still 20 degrees up here. It doesn't change. If we have a 90 degree angle, we can see our little box, and we make a square that's larger, it's still a 90 degree angle. The rays may have gotten longer, but the angle did not change. It's still a 90 degree angle. So remember, we can use common sense and what we know about angles to help us solve problems involving angles. Acute angles are greater than zero degrees, but less than 90 degrees. Right angles are exactly 90 degrees. Obtuse angles are greater than 90 degrees, less than 180 degrees. And straight angles are exactly 180 degrees. So remember to use the little degree symbol. Remember to check your work with an inverse operation. And remember to extend lines if you need them to help you. We're going to be finished with chapter 11 now and moving on to chapter 12. And we're going to talk about measurement units like millimeters or gallons or quarts and things like that. I hope you're doing well and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.